shut up and sit down. Hi right, guys, this is Big Mac's Workshop and Paint Studio. I'm Dodge, and this week we are painting the Pravion from Forge World. Now, this is a really cool fig. It's got a ton of details on it. As you can tell there, he's got a shoulder pad on for the white scars, as someone's asked us to uh, paint this for them. So he's also got a very, very cool backpack. Um, the only problem I find with this model is the vast amount of metals that you have to do on this. And also, um, I don't know how long those skulls are going to stay on there. Thanks, Forge World. They really need to start replacing those actual pieces of metal that you can drill into the model itself. It's probably the best way to do it. So what I did to start off with this is I did a Vallejo Black Prime and then went over that with Decay Black by Scale 75. Now we're applying a Negro Grey by Scale 75. I just wanted to put the Decay Black down because I'm going to be using that later on to blend the colours back down because we're going to do a lot of this armour in black then we're going to uh, bring it up to a bluish tone and then take it back down so next we're going to add a little bit of Despair Green by Scale 75 into the uh, Negro Grey as you can tell that's quite blue but as with all acrylic paints it'll dry a, well, a lot darker than the uh, colour I'm putting on which is kind of useful for what we do as we'll be able to see where we've applied the paint most over the black surface then it'll still be quite dark when we're finished so after that we're going to add a little bit more despair green as you can see um, despair green actually turns a uh, quite blue when you start layering it over the degray <coughs> when you start layering it over the decay black and the uh, negro gray just gently building up all those areas that we want the highlights on. You've got to bear in mind we're going to take this back down again as well. So next we're going to add Insmouth Blue by Scale 75 into the Despair Green. And this is just going to bring up those blues even further. It's one, one of the reasons I end up using my uh, thumb there as the palette is you can also see the colours rather than me you know, having a different camera for my palette also it helps me get rid of the excess off the brush and see how wet the brush is as well as I'm glazing these in and I want to be in control of that so next it's just Insmouth Blue and I believe that will be the last layer of the blue that we do at least for now someone was recently asking how to do a how to do some black tones or some black colours. This is one of the ways to do it. You could do this with any colour. Okay, now that's looking very blue. But what we've got here is Army Painter Ice Storm. What we're going to do is we're going to use that to build up those edge highlights. Just very gently. They can be quite bright. Um, as long as they're neat because we're going to put washes and other layers over these to uh, tone them with everything else it's just the way I like to uh, tone my edge highlights is by putting a wash over them and the previous colors to really pull them together and soften the edges of the edge highlight where you get that maybe a slight brush stroke in there so what this is is decay black by scale 75 as a wash and you can tell that's really watered down but the thing is with scale 75 the pigment is so smooth and so small because it's meant for airbrush paints um actually it's not meant for airbrush paints my mistake it can be it goes really well through the airbrush paints that unlike games workshop paints it's not going to clump up this is going to go where you want it as a wash and just it's going to be applied as a very very thin layer and that's really going to start to bring out those details as you can see i'm using a wash brush as well just to uh, cover as much of the surface as I can with one smooth stroke. And I'm going back to the Ice Storm by Army Painter. As you can see, that effect's starting to work there. We're starting to get um, a bluey highlight tone where the light's hitting. And we've toned all our edges down, but we're going to bring those back up. Not covering as much as we did previously, just covering enough to uh, really start to make those a bit more three dimensional. As the model is still quite blue, we're going to go over with another decay, um, decay black wash. 
I really like the way this is going. Um, it's quite smooth as well uh, because I've been using a lot of the scale 75 paints and the pigment in that is really good. It really does tone those down. Now it was going to look quite blue at the moment because there's nothing to compare it to. So we're going to start adding some other colours in there now. We're going to use scale 75 thrash metal. And at this point I'm going to pick out which parts of the model I'm going to have as metal parts. Basically when it comes to picking out the metal parts I did follow the uh, Forge World model. Then what we're going to do is mix Drushi Violet and Null Oil by Scale 75 and give that a wash. As you can, as you can see here I'm not using a wash brush now, I'm using my standard layer brush. And the reason for that is I want to stay in control of where that goes now I've done the armour. After that, which I actually ended up doing two layers bit by bit to get that particular colour there, I'm going to use Model Air Metallic Gun Metal. I'm just going to start picking out the uh, top sections of all the metallic parts, keeping my brush to a very, very thin point. And being very sparing with the paint, you can just keep coming back and forth. Uh, this is going to add a reflective surface to all the metals that we've just dulled down. So you don't want to go over the top on this because it's also a brighter colour at this point. After that, we're going to use Model Air Metallic Rust. One of the reasons we're using this is simply to just start breaking up the model so it's not just silver and blackish blue. I chose to do uh, the knee joins in this colour, the centre of his chest piece and bits of his backpack we're doing the exact same way as well guys so don't forget to do the backpack. It's, uh, so sometimes it's handy to have the model in two parts because while, while one piece is drying you can skip and do the other piece. Now how we've been painting white uh, for this particular job is we've been using Israel Sand, which is a Vallejo primer, um, nice colour, Com covers really well with the airbrush, not so much with the brush, um, so it was a bit awkward, but that's what we're going to use to start bringing out the underneath of the white scar shoulder pad. Also I decided to uh, pick out the knee there as well, just to add a little bit more detail, break up the model a bit more. Now we're going to use Sky Grey by Model Colour, and we're going to start highlighting up two thirds of that. And also I did the knee pad and the arm in the same colours, but one of the reasons I did the knee pad, it was just easier for me to show you that on camera. We do have some camera problems later on, which is been occurring quite a lot recently um, where I've knocked my camera and not noticed that it's not quite in focus or the lighting's a little bit off. Next up we are using Ghost Grey by Game Color to uh, highlight the knee again. But This is like the top quarter. I do hope that shows up for you well enough so you can uh, see but it's very hard to capture whites on camera properly. After the Ghost Grey, we're going to use Off White by Model Colour, which is pretty much the white at this point, it's just not quite as white as Games Workshop's whites. I do end up extending the white bit on the arm there, because the fact he's pointing to that arm, um, pressing a button on it, I thought I'd make that arm look a little bit more important and stand out a little bit more. After that I'm going to use Decay Metal by Scale 75. I'm going to use that for the decorative trim on the shoulder pad as I wanted the shoulder pad to uh, stand out seeing as it's his chapter and I do carry this colour on in a few other places as well just to start breaking things up. What I find difficult with metallics is keeping track of which set of metallics you're doing which colour when you're jumping back and forth. So uh, try and keep an eye on that. Next we're going to add Victorian Brass into the Decay Metal, both of those are scale 75. And we're going to start highlighting up the edges of the trim on the shoulder. Also at some point on this video I decide to uh, skip around and change the knee so it matches the shoulder pad. 
as I just thought it looked a little bit better. Next up, we're just going to start highlighting those with Victorian brass on their own. In this case, I do actually think the less white is uh, better. And that knee was just a little bit too much. But doing it in the brass, making it match that shoulder. And later on, we also do the balls on that right leg. The studs on the right leg in the same colour as well. Which makes it look kind of decorative. But um, just catches the eye a little bit more with this piece. Pouch, sorry. Now for the uh, holster, we're going to use a very simple combination. We're going to use Dryad Bark by Games Workshop as the base. It's really important to try and bring out these other extra details that he has around him because um, there's so much metallic on there. Yeah. You want you want to put you want to put a little bit of effort into bringing out the other details just to draw the eye away from all the metallics. Next up is a Reclam Flesh Shade Wash. This is watered down. Going to put that over the uh, Victorian brass pieces that we've done. And this is going to uh, warm that up quite considerably and uh, just make it contrast everything else. You want to do this in several thin layers until you get the look that you desire because you obviously don't want to throw down a pure Reclam flesh shade wash and then not be happy with it because you can't really take it off. So little layers and just build up that colour. So, on to the holster again. This one will be Gothor Brown plus Dryad Bark. You know, the reason for that, instead of just going to the Gothor Brown, is I just wanted to transition those colours a little bit more. And uh, the rest of the ones that Andy's painting, the colour actually ends up going quite bright on those holsters. Whereas traditionally, when it came to doing leather, if you've seen the Paint Palette leather video, I tend to use a different set of colours for this type of leather. Next up, it's just going to be Gothor Brown on its own. Just working towards those highlight areas. Just on the towards the edges. Not so much towards the top of the holster because there'd be shadow from his shoulder pad. But uh, on the outside edges, definitely. So working from the shade, pulling outwards. And you can see I'm just feathering most of that in there. Next, after that, we're going to use... We're going to add Rakarth Flesh into the Gothor Brown. That's just to really bring out those edges. As anyone who watches the channel regularly will know, I'm always using Rakarth Flesh to uh, mute my colours or to lighten them up. It's really, really good for that. I find it better than adding a white and making things brighter. It's just really good at muting things. So for leather, adding that reflection, it does a really good job of that. Next up, we're going to use Scale 75 Peanut Butter. And this is just going to be applied to the parts of the logo that go along the uh, lightning strike. Really not much to show you on this one, as it's just a base layer of peanut butter. You want to be really careful not to hit your whites. Right, next up we're going to use Model Colour Burnt Red and we're going to use that to do the main symbol for the white scars. Burnt Red by Model Colour is quite a thick paint so you want to thin this down quite a bit and not go over it too many times. If you're going to go back over it you want to let it dry a little bit. Right, I'm jumping back to the backpack now and um, we're going to use this has been done in all the other all the other colours we've used on the main figure have been used on this, so you've not missed out on anything. Next, we're going to be using warp lock bronze to get behind some of the recesses and detail work. I just decided to uh, start adding warp lock to break up this big wad of Victorian brass that we've got. I wanted to darken the area around where all those little light switches are as well. Well, I wouldn't say this. There might be buttons. I'm not quite sure. But they definitely look like they're some form of lights. So I thought I'd darken the area around them so when we're lighting them up later, there's a little bit more contrast. Next, we're going to use Scale 75's Black Metal. 
And the black metal, unlike the Model Air Metallic black metal, this one is kind of blue, um, which I thought that's going to be really handy. Um, it's going to break up all the other colours, so just separate all the piping from everything else. And I did carry this around. So I started doing all the piping in that particular colour just to break things up. It's a very subtle difference, but it is a, it is a difference and it is noticeable. Next up, I'm adding an Agrax Earthshade wash to most of the little brass parts. Not the bits that we did with the Victorian brass, but all the bits that haven't really had anything done to it recently. I will apply this to several other places as well, and I will apply it to the white areas. And I'll be very careful when applying it to the white areas. You just want to brush it into the shadows. Give it a once over with the edge of your brush so you don't leave any real marks and it just tones that hue down ever so slightly next for the skulls I'm going to start with X388 and uh, I did notice this backpack was rather difficult to get on camera and to keep on camera in focus because the uh, position of the skulls any, any model like that is a bit of a pain anything with a staff or really an arm or something that really sticks out far it's very difficult to uh, get it to focus properly and after that I'm going to use I'm going to add Carrick Stone into the XV88 to lighten it up and we're going to start working the top of the skull and the face at this point you don't have to be too neat and worry about the metallic parts of the skulls which I do believe I end up doing those off camera because I just pick any one of the metallics that I've done as a colour set and just apply those. That's if I can remember correctly. But you can do those any colour you want really. Next is just going to be Carrick Stone on its own. Start bringing up those highlights a little bit further. Didn't want the... you could have done... well say... let's say you could have done the Zandri dust combination that most people would usually do for these skulls. I just wanted to do something a little bit different. Make them look a, a little bit more older and sort of a little bit more technical rather than a, a cartoony skull sort of colour. Next, obviously, is wash this with an Agrax Earth Shade. And as you can tell, I've just thrown on one of those metals there. And I'm, what I do know is it's not the same metal as the pipes. It's probably the thrash metal that we started with. And we're going to wash all of those. That way we're going to get a nice divide between the skull and the metal work where the Agrax Earth Shade will sit. And I do apologise if at this point it's not as in focus as it should be. I will try and sharpen this up before I render it. Next, this is just Carrick Stone on its own again. You can see I'm just using the tip of the brush and I'm just trying to bring out the very tops of the skulls where the light would hit. Bring out the uh, cheekbones and all those other parts. The cheekbones, the teeth, the nose bone and the brow. Tends to be all you need to bring out on your last highlight with skulls. But, uh, yeah, these were really difficult to, uh, paint. As obviously I don't want to rest my finger against the, uh, against the pipe there and risk snapping it off. Next up, to do the extra cable that runs down the pipe, I decided to basically just go straight over that with Model Air Metallic Gold. Which is nothing really special, but... Once you start putting a few layers on, it looks like part of the same machine. It looks like a cable. So rather than running reds and other stuff through it, I decided to keep that metallic look. And um, yeah, I started carrying that around all of the other cables as well. Obviously not the pipe style cables with all the uh, ridges in it, but all the flat cables. And it does add a nice effect. Now we're going to use Fire Red by Mod Lair, and we're going to use that for the lenses. Reason for that is it's quite a dark, vibrant, no sorry, it's quite a dark, strong red. And uh, it'll give a good coverage over those tiny areas. Obviously when you're pulling your brush away from this, this model with the red on it at this point, you want to be very careful you don't hit anything else. 
Next, we're going to go over those with Evil Sun Scarlet by Games Workshop. For the round lens, we're working towards the bottom left corner, and for the square lens, I'm starting to work towards the top and the right hand corner. I meant right hand corner on the circle one as well. Just uh, gently highlighting those in, bringing them in so there's a transition between light and dark, and we can see where the, well, the round one would light up from the inside, I'm guessing, but the other one I think would have a reflection on it. Now, what I've managed to do here, if this is not exported properly, is, sorry, if this is not rendered properly, is uh, not be able to fix this bit of footage. Um, I don't know what this is, I think it's something to do with the lighting on my camera, because I've knocked it and not paid attention while, while I've been recording. The colour we are currently doing though is Caliban Green by Games Workshop and we're going to be using that for all the other lights that we want to just be a different colour. It was a simple contrast between the reds and greens as well. As you can see I'm trying to get that in focus there but for some reason the camera just doesn't seem to want to have it. So after we've done the Caliban Green we're going to start adding a little bit of Moot Green into that. Just start bringing out the uh, very, very tops of those lights. Just try and give them a slight glow. The camera will fix itself again before before too long. So don't worry too much about that. But I obviously didn't, wasn't able to just strip this model and repaint it. Next up is Old Copper by Scale 75. Which is very similar to the Victorian Brass but it, it just looks a bit older. What I'm doing is those little clips that look like they tie all the cables together for the skulls, just going to go over those with it. The reason I went for the old copper is because I wanted to highlight them as well using the Victorian brass that's going to make them look ever so slightly different but also bring them together with the whole model. So after that, I'm going to highlight those with Victorian Brass by Scale 75. Don't need to cover the whole thing, just the outer edges of them all. And if you keep it watered down, try and aim most of your highlight towards the top, towards the direction of the skulls where most of the light would be coming from. And it would have been nice to put some OSL lighting on these skulls, but this isn't my model. Like really light up the faces and have them um, reflecting on the model itself. In fact, that, yeah, if I ever get one of these, I reckon that's what I'll do. Next up, for an edge highlight, we're going to use Heavy Metal by Scale 75. And basically going to use that on all the silver edges. I do recommend the Scale 75 uh, metallic sets. You can get them from the outpost and the link's in the description. You can get them there. I do recommend them a lot. Uh, we tend to use them all the time. I'm going to start skipping through this a little bit faster because this video quality for this part is terrible. Just want to clarify that we're using the same colour to highlight all the parts, including the top of the antenna and everything else as well just to start really breaking up that big wad of metallics that we've got and if it looks a bit patchy don't worry because we're going to put an oil wash on this and that's really going to make everything pop now we're going to mix screaming skull into carrick stone and that's going to be the final highlight for the skulls it really is a shame that um the skull footage on this backpack didn't turn out too well I am going to be running some experiments on my camera to figure out what's wrong with it and why it keeps doing this in the past two videos. Apparently it's also recording at a different frame rate for some reason. Uh, it doesn't even matter what video it is, so that doesn't make any sense. So, next up we're going to highlight those reds one more time. We're going to add Screaming Skull into the Wild Rider Red. It's not a combination I usually use, but it does add a little bit of an orange glow that's a bit pale, which is what I like to do with most of my highlights, although you could go vibrant orange, but everything else seems to be sort of muted and metallic, so I didn't want to go over the top with 
too many bright bits. I wanted them to be just bright enough so you could tell what they were. Next, back to Moot Green, and we're going to add a little bit of Screaming Skull into that as well. And then we're going to go back over all the green buttons and just start picking out not the green buttons. We're going to go back to doing all the green lights and just pick out the very tops of them. There's a couple of extra lights and details on those skulls as well. And hopefully in a minute, the camera will fix itself. Next, we're going to use Null Oil, watered down. And just add a wash to those top metallic parts for the skulls. Really, we want that Null Oil to sit in all those little detail sections around the skull. And in between the skull and the metal part as well, just to give a nice black hard line. And hey presto, the camera fixed itself, so I have no idea what the issue was. Um, not a clue, I will try and figure that one out for you. So we're doing the grenade, we need to make that stand out a little bit. We're going to do scale 75's Riff Green. She's a bit of a basic colour, but the combination of greens that were picked out of the Scale 75 set worked really well for highlighting grenades with very little effort and very little blending. Next up, I'm going to use Lead Belcher to do the details on the pistol on his side. I don't go too far into detail with that pistol, as again, it's more metallic work, and I want those metallics that are there underneath to sort of blend in and disappear with everything else so we don't want to be drawing the eye down to that gun but the holster is fine as it adds a different colour to the whole model next we're going to add Ardanis Green by scale yeah we're going to apply Ardanis Green by scale 75 over the raised bits of the grenade now, this is what I mean I don't even think I sped this bit of footage up it was just Nice easy coverage, the pigment is small so you don't get a lumpy pain. Um, really nice and easy and the colour transitions spot on. But we're not going to stop there, we're going to do a little bit extra on this as well. And there's a grenade next to him as well and I couldn't figure out... Oh no, sorry, wrong bit. This is Almond Field Grey by Scale 75. And uh, that is just going to be used to just touch up the very edges. Next is the Amethyst Alchemy by Scale 75, again from the Scale 75 Silver set. This has got a bit of a purple hue to it, so I decided to throw that in there just to uh, break up all the other metallics. I just couldn't decide what colour to do that grenade. Then I think the colour itself worked out kind of well. Next, I'm just going to apply some thrash metal to the... Is it to the... Well, to the pins on all the grenades and to the bits of the holster that hold those on. I'm going back to the White Scars logo now to finish that off and we're going to start with Blood Red by Scale 75. This combination that Andy's been using, just like that grenade, really do not require much in the way of blending at all or any real skill to apply, just adding those layers over each other, letting the other one show through, um, nice and easy. And for a small work surface like this, it's a really good idea to do the combination like this. Antares Red by Scale 75. And we'll just work into the top third of that. Again, there's really not that much effort. Just be really careful with your brush. Uh, make sure it's got a nice point on it. Just You're almost going exactly over the area you just went. And you can see that starting to build up there. Next is Alderbarn Red, scale 75, and it's getting slightly more orange here. 
and it's almost an edge highlight just drag it a little bit more into the other colors and you can see there as it goes from a sort of a fiery orange and a red color and the next color is mars orange on its own just as an edge highlight to that top edge and mars orange is a scale 75 as well Next for the yellow parts, what we're going to do is add model colour ivory into the scale 75 peanut butter. As the area here is really really small so I find that instead of adding loads of different colours and trying to wash them and blend them, it's just easier to add a little colour into the previous one uh, to get it where you want to go very slowly with a minimal amount of layers needing to be applied. And then again, all I'm going to do here is just add a little bit more ivory and just work towards those top edges. So I've really started to uh, mix my paints a lot more nowadays um, as it gives me a lot more control over what colour I'm applying. And we're almost at the very end of the video, but I decided that I was going to mix Victorian Brass with a little bit of Amber Alchemy as I've started to edge highlight all the other stuff with the previous colours as mentioned so I just wanted to bring out the metallic colours for the brass sections and his armour pad so here we have it guys all done and on the lazy susan this is after the pin wash so obviously I've done the oil wash with the gloss and then I've done a matte to tone it all back down Hopefully this will turn up alright on camera, I should be able to adjust this as it's quite easy. Got to apologise for the camera mess up on that backpack, for some reason the camera really didn't like recording that. I'm going to have to work on that as well, uh, so it doesn't happen in the next video. So, what, what, what I've got to say, summarise, it is a fun model when you start, and then the overwhelming amount of metallic areas, um, they really make the model boring quite quickly. But uh, you just got to sit through it, bogged down, and uh, you end up with a decent enough result. So thanks everyone for watching. You guys are awesome. So don't forget to uh, hit like, hit subscribe, share these with your friends because that helps us out no end. And we've got some special thank yous to give out. We've got a big thank you to give out to our patrons. The Oak Boys, Matt, Ludwig Hofbauer, Warren, Dwak, Agnes of Dawn, Dave and Mark. You guys are our top paying patrons. You help support this channel a lot and we very much appreciate that. Also, feel free to check out the links in the description to our eBay, our eBay store where we sell a lot of resin bases, our Teesprings with some random merch on it. And check out the Outpost, which is our affiliate link. Uh, 15 to 20% off all gaming supplies. Uh, paintbrushes, paints, all the ones that are listed in here. And all, all hobby stuff like Games Workshop, merchandise, models and all that lot. If you go through the affiliate link in our description, they give us store credit just for the advertisement. So, thanks very much for watching, guys. Don't forget to hit like, share, leave a comment if you've got any questions, and we shall catch you in the next one.